What's happening? What's going on? You know who it is, DJ Wu Pig. It's time for quarter number three. I'm not going to lie to you. It's uh, it's 4.30 in the morning. How, how do I get myself in these situations? Uh, as I've said, as, as we all get busier, this just gets a little bit harder to do. So I'm not going to lie to you. I was supposed to do this on Wednesday. Wednesday turns to Thursday. Thursday turns to Friday. Not a whole lot going on. I did get started on building a chicken coop. Uh, I'm a chicken farmer. Actually, this is this is July 4th, so uh, 4th of July, I'm at the house. I'll be I'll be quite honest with you, and uh, this may be another video for a whole nother day, but um, in business, I'll keep it brief. In business, uh, you have to understand that discounts do not buy loyalty. They never will. 4th of July, this is my first 4th of July off. Normally, we do a... Uh, an event for my hometown uh, for uh, a festival we really kind of helped start. I helped start. Um, we were the first uh, to provide DJ services and audio and video services, and it's grown year over year over year. And as things have grown, um, our production has grown. The caliber of what we do, you guys have seen. They didn't. They didn't know what they were getting into, and to be honest, neither did we. Um, and last year, you know, we flew a Vertec PA and had a full lighting package and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to have seen the thing grow from what it started as to what it was the last time we were a part of it. Um, and I thought by me adding discounts and, you know, always trying to meet them halfway that eventually we wouldn't have to keep having these conversations. And uh, long story long, we didn't come to an agreement on uh, on a on a Fourth of July show this year, which is fine. I have, um, if anything, I have learned to value my time. This stuff costs money to do. Uh, we've got you know people's salaries to meet, and uh, you know I've got contractors to pay, and I've got gear to pay for. This is an expensive business, um, and there's no reason why. I can get the same money from other people for doing the same job um, and not everybody wants the same not everybody wants um, the same treatment uh, they, they expect things to be cheaper because uh, maybe maybe your friends I don't know not all of my customers uh, are still my customers and it's not that we did anything wrong it's just that's how business goes we all get online and we try to search for uh, something on Amazon. Unless you're looking for a specific thing, generally you're looking for a, uh, a bargain. And that's every customer. I do the same thing. Don't cheapen your prices to meet someone else's expectations. You will end up, um, I'm not going to say heartbroken, but you will end up frustrated every time. Off my soapbox, July 17th, we arrive in sunny hot Scottsdale, Arizona for uh, a think tank conference. It's a conference of uh, like-minded business owners that uh, want to keep leveling up. And I hate to keep getting on these soapboxes. I can't stress to you how important it is to have a community of people who um, help you be better. And that's what think tank does for me. I was on the education committee this year and a buddy of mine approached me about uh, MCing the thing, and I, you know, you're in a group of your peers. It's a tough gig when you when you get in front of 50 of your peers, um, and not just 50 of your peers, 50 of the the elite, uh, you know, kind of one percent, you know, group in your industry. It's uh, it's intimidating, but uh, my buddy David pushed me to MC and I'm glad he did because it pushed me outside of my comfort zone. It helped me level up. It created new connections. Uh, it was an incredible time and uh, it was in hot Scottsdale, Arizona. Good group of people. Some of my greatest friends. Coming out of Scottsdale, really kind of going into uh, another week of travel with one of my DJs. That's another cool thing 
that I've been able to do as a boss is invite people along on the journey. That's Tyler. He's one of my uh, new DJs. You've seen him on, on some of the YouTube videos. He's working here in the office for now. Uh, great guy. I got to invite him out to uh, the DJ Expo in Atlantic City, which is a, a great time. Um, get, get to hang out, learn and grow, level up with a bunch of other like-minded people and, uh, and spend some time out there learning and growing and really kind of connecting with, uh, with not only some of my DJ homies, but my own, uh, my own team as well. And to bring it full circle, uh, so the same group of people that put on the 4th of July show actually brought in a, a, a major artist for another show. It just so happened that they called me back uh, whenever they bring in a major artist because the company that they were using um, couldn't handle the job. So uh, this is kind of cool. It's my, my hometown. This is where I graduated high school. They just built a $26 million uh, arena for sports. It's just, it's crazy. Uh, this thing is nice. It's a palace. And for kind of one of their opening events, they're holding a concert. And uh, who else would you call than somebody in the business happens to just be a graduate of the high school. Um, it's kind of funny how it all worked out, but they ended up calling me back for this show. Here I am going to do a site survey uh, before that job begins. So last video, when my daughter was born, I was at Harding University, which is uh, the campus where Springsteen is held. So I, I kind of did a, uh, a mention last video that we came back and did a installation in this room. And uh, here it is. This is something I'm super proud of. We ended up installing, uh, this is mid-install. They actually got started on this thing while I was out in Arizona. Uh, but this is the new JBL 910 SRX PA, uh, the same stuff that we bought. We ended up installing in this auditorium. It seats, uh, somewhere around 2,800 people. I want to say it's the largest auditorium. Uh, it's not quite a theater. There are different uh, classifications, but it's the largest auditorium, uh, in the state. We installed eight aside of the 910 PA, which sounds really good. Uh, up here in the catwalk, we installed four of the dual 18 subs. And then what's what you can't see, well, I guess it's in there right now. We also installed uh, some flown uh, onstage monitoring, which is the SRX 812. Uh, you can see those up there in the ceiling. Also, we uh, sold them these video wall carts that they use as a part of their everyday um, chapel services inside of the auditorium. That's to date the largest install job we've ever done. That that was a project that kind of started uh, during COVID. Uh, it was really tough to get our hands on stuff. So we put in uh, not only the PA, but we put in an Allen and Heath, uh, a Vanus console, and then all of the networking and, and things to go with the console and stage boxes and power sequencing. Uh, the list goes on and on, but really a complete install uh, in the six-figure range. That's uh, it, it was the first install that we had done at this caliber, at this price point. Um, creating a relationship with people. One job leads to the next job, and the next thing you know, you're putting in a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory into, uh, into their building. So keep this image in your in your brain. This is a rendering for a show that we did uh, later on in this same video. But this was the largest show that we did uh, for 2023. That we this is the largest show we helped to produce. Uh, all in all, 300 some odd video tiles, a uh, bunch of lighting, lasers, uh, cold sparks, and cryo and audio and it, uh, a bunch of travel. Oh, by the way, it's in Salt Lake City, which is 1,500, 2,000 miles away from my bed. Another install project. There's Blake up in the uh, up in the Skyjack lift. This was uh, mentioned also in last week's video. We installed a new PA system at a local high school. Um, that project went off really great. They really love it. There's been a huge improvement over what they had. We were able to get that thing kicked off right before football season started. So they've had a new uh, a new PA for this. Uh, football season again another relationship thing they called us last year uh, in a pinch needing uh, a, uh, needing audio coverage for their high school graduation ceremonies the company that 
took my 4th of July uh, client uh, was the company who was hired to do this uh, high school graduation commencement ceremony. And they were off at another show. I guess it didn't get written down. Um, so they call us in a pinch. We charge a, a I'm not going to say a premium price. We charge an appropriate price for a crunch time situation because uh, they called us, I want to say, a day or two before their graduation. Uh, we go, we do their graduation, knock it out of the park. They call us and are interested in installing a PA system. We got that job. Uh, and then now we've also gotten the job to install a PA system on their baseball field. So it's just, again, it's, it's crazy. Uh, relationships are the key cog in building business. As that, and as you can see here, um, it, it, it's, it's not a lie. It's not a trick. It's not a game. Uh, if you take care of customers and you create relationships, you will always have, uh, you'll always have customers. This was a video wall that we sold to a local hospital. Uh, this is uh, an unfinished floor of the hospital where they conduct a town hall meeting. Really, it's just a, uh, an opportunity for the, the CEO of the hospital to talk to the employees, tell them about what's coming up. Uh, we sold them a video wall. We were renting them a video wall. They wanted to buy one because uh, the plan is ultimately to move that video wall from the unfinished floor down to um, their, their theater that they will have at the hospital. Um, a lot of hospitals are putting in theaters now, uh, where if let's say a, um, a pharmaceutical rep is coming by to give information on a drug, you can host people at the hospital. I call at the office about, um, a guy wanted to, um, he wanted to do the, the rehearsal dinner party. His wife got to plan the wedding. He wanted to do the rehearsal dinner. I went out there, met him. He had some ideas about doing some bistro lights over the pool, uh, and maybe putting some lights inside of the pool. And, uh, and this was the final product. Uh, we ended up doing up lighting around the house. We put a, um, we put a projector on the, the side of the house for them to do a slideshow and then a football game later on in the night. These are our bistro lights on our Schedule 40 pipe and bases. These worked out really well. Um, I had an idea to take some old whiskey barrels, cut them in half, and you know, kind of dress this thing up, make it look uh, look really nice. And then the uh, the pool lights, we got 80 of these uh, off of Amazon. I want they were expensive. Um, but we've, we've got them for, I want to say a couple hundred bucks, ended up upselling them to the actual client. He wanted to buy them. Uh, it all worked out great. And, uh, one of the cooler, one of the cooler, uh, smaller jobs that we got to do this year. All right. Remember that rendering me and Blake made it out to Salt Lake city, Utah. And let me tell you this, the best weather, uh, the best weather I've ever been a part of, man. It was fantastic out there. Semi trailer full of gear from Arkansas to Salt Lake city. This show was big 25, 26 motor points, um, 24 boxes of PA 16 subs, uh, a bunch of video panels, uh, 12 Martin moving heads, 12 matrix moving heads, uh, the Chave rogue R3s, um, uh, lasers, uh, what else? Just a ton, a ton of gear. We got to Salt Lake city on a Thursday, the show loaded in on Friday and then the doors open Saturday at 7 a.m. I'm not going to say we were the best prepared on that end. Uh, it was a crew all in all of around 10 that went down there, um, different levels of experience. And we had, I want to say another 10, 12 hands when we got to the show or got to the venue and uh, it, it, it took a lot. We that we were at that venue a long time. We got there to load in at seven, and I want to say we walked out of there to get some rest. Uh, me and Blake actually took an Uber back to our Airbnb at like three o'clock in the morning. This was for an event called Limitless Arena, uh, which was like an influencer space conference. If you go back and look at the rendering, maybe I'll put them up side by side. There's the finished product. 
Gary V on stage. It was uh, it was really kind of mind blowing to get to see Gary V, somebody who I've looked up to. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen his stuff on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and social media. Right when I first started watching Gary Vee, I remember dragging my wife to the Target in Springfield, Missouri to go get this book. I went from watching Gary Vee, being inspired, listening to what he had to say, understanding that um, you can literally change your life. It just takes hard work. And to have him on my stage, running through my PA system, all these years later, it's mind-blowing bunch of pictures from that uh steve aoki's set was crazy what he's able to do his his guys his video people what they're able to do with uh with video is incredible uh, this event was something that i was really really proud of really proud of we end quarter number three on a bang. We leave that show on a Sunday. The semi makes its way back home. We've got to be back home Tuesday because again, we're loading in another show. Remember earlier in the video, I said I went and did a site survey at my local high school. That show is now. Uh, so we're loading that show in and it's, it's cool to be at your, your school that you graduated from, putting on this production for all of, you know, for basically your hometown. You're showing off to your hometown. You leave out of that show, literally the next day we load in uh, a festival in my hometown again called Get Down Downtown, uh, Vertec PA, the SRX subs. Uh, I think we had, are those Vipers? Uh, yeah, those are, those are Mac Vipers for, uh, for profiles, Chave Rogue R3 washes. We did David Lee Murphy. This was probably five, six years ago. I would say that was my first real show as a, uh, production company owner. I'm going to cry. This is, I'll put up a picture. I'll put up a side by side picture of, uh, of the first time I did David Lee Murphy and then the second time I did uh, David Lee Murphy. And I'll let you be the judge on on just what the progression has been. Gary Vee is right. He's 100% right. You can do anything you put your mind to. I am, you've literally seen a product of what you can do if you work hard and you apply a little bit of pressure. It's incredible what you're capable of when you believe in yourself. And if you're not gonna believe in yourself, no one else will. No one's gonna be your cheerleader. You have to want to do it. Um, and it's been cool just looking back and knowing five years ago when I did this same guy, I thought I was on top of the world. After I got done with that show five years ago, I said, why can't we get a second one? And why can't we make that second one bigger and better? And now it's here. And we've still got a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. We've still got an incredible way to go. I wanna do Coachella. And this video is a reminder to me that you can do anything.